Hi, I'm Streaky from Streaky.com and today I give you my way of professionally organising my file system. So one of the day-to-day -day chores that you need to do to try and make life a little bit quicker and easier and everybody has their own way of working with files, folders, drives and just a whole computer network system so that you can get running fast, everything's backed up, everything. So how do I do all of that stuff? So let me just run through how things come into the studio and then how they leave at the end and then that will kind of, su should sum up exactly what happens. So people send me files all the time now via WeTransfer or Dropbox. They come in, they go onto a separate drive which has some uh, virusy software on. So they get scanned when they come in. It's called a quarantine drive. That means that everything is nice and clean, ready to go so that they are you know, shipped into my sessions. What happens is uh, my system will go through the files and we'll just work out the sample rates and stuff, make sure everything's correct to how I want it. Then what happens is that goes on into a session for Pro Tools. Now, for Pro Tools, they're named every day by the uh, artist. So every day there is a template that for that artist. Now, the templates that I use are pre-built ones in Pro Tools that have all my limiters that I like, all the compressors I like, all the ins and outs, everything's there all the time. I don't have to make a new session every time. That's something that I have done in recent years just because it really speeds up the process. Things can come in, they get cleaned up, they then get put into a session and then I can get going straight away on them, which saves me bundles of time at the start of a session. I don't have to keep thinking of what I'm gonna call up. As, I, as I've always said, even when it comes to hardware that I use, I like to just bring in one new bit of equipment every few months. Like, yeah, I know I test loads of things and I review things and stuff and people send me equipment to look at, but it won't enter into my system straight away, as in my mastering system for the day. It has to sort of go on test for a while. I have to think, okay, is that what I want to use? Because I want to work fast, I need to get results, I need to be able to hear what I'm doing, I need to know what I'm doing straight away so that I can just go, okay, that's what I want, that's what I want, to get that sound that I can hear in my head. So going back to my session template in Pro Tools, that's very similar, so that what I'm doing is I'm just bringing in a compressor or I might just try plugins and stuff just to try them out, maybe I'm going to review them or just someone's mentioned it, but there's no way it'll come into my session folder until I know that, okay, I'm going to use that, I know how to use that, and then I'll work with it for months until I really have honed it, and then I know exactly how it sounds so I can get a really fast result with it. Now, the one thing that is always a pain, and everyone knows this, is file names. Now, it's really important when you send files across to anybody, always put at the end of it what the sample rate is and what the bit rate is. Because basically, when a file comes in, I have to look that up, I have to check it out, and then it has to, you know, I have to then set my equipment up for how that's gonna play in or whether I wanna upsample it or whatever I wanna do with it after listening to it. But I need to know what it is beforehand, so that's really helpful. And every time that I master a track, after I've mastered it, I always keep the name of the track exactly the same because sometimes it'll have different mixes or different things that the, the producer has put on there. So I'll always just put underscore mastered, underscore whatever the sample rate and stuff is. So it'll say mastered 4824, and then that gets sent out. So is always a visual cue rather than having to rely on software to be able to tell you what the sample rate and stuff is. It's just visual straight away. Every single record label that I work for always asks for that so that I've got in the habit of just doing that for everybody. It's a really good habit for you to get into when you're sending things to a mastering house and definitely name your files. Definitely do different versions of mixes so that you know where they are and make sure they're all in the same file so it's quick for you to find stuff. That's how I work. Everything's under, a, under the artist name and then within that there's session names and so that everything's really labelled well so that I can find stuff quickly. Because when it comes back to me uh, being asked by labels, okay, we need this version, that version, everything has to be in my dispatch folder, all labelled out in a hierarchy with that band or artist, and then it's under every date, and then it's uh, the, the tracks, and then the file name's going to be exactly the same as the file name they sent me. I'm not going to make one up for myself, and then it will have mastered, and then whatever the 
um, you know, the resolution is after that. That's really important because someone might say, okay, I want the 4416 version of this mix, blah, blah, bang, straight away, really easy. And it's not just me doing stuff. My assistant's there to try and pull the files out. If I'm not here, then they have to like get the files, send them off. So everything has to be right and in a system. And systems is what makes or breaks working very quickly, very easily through stuff. And once you've got systems in place, then anyone can step in and just find stuff really simply and it, and it just makes the whole studio so much smoother. So that's kind of how it works for me from tracks coming in to then me putting them through my file system to then sending them out to the clients with the format and everything so it's all exactly the same how they've sent it to me but just with my little extra underscore mastered and then whatever the resolution is after that. And then if I do another version then it'll be mastered too mastered three so we know what those different versions are i'm not going to put mastered two extra blah 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 because it's just too much for the client they just want to know okay i'll have version two of, of the master and i want it as the 4416 so that's kind of how it works i hope you've picked something out of this i'd love to know if you've got any really good tips for me uh, in the comments how i can speed up and get a system going that works better i like to keep everything as organized and as minimal as possible i keep going on about minimalism but it's really key in a studio because it's so easy these days to just get packed up with loads of stuff and cables and plugins and everything and so if you're unorganized so the sound you're doing everything about what you're doing is un unorganized and it's going to all be messy so i just like to have things clear things nice simple in their places and then it makes for a really easy quick professional environment so yeah let me know what you think if you like this kind of content please subscribe you may not have rung the bell before so please do that so that you get notified every day i do videos every day please go to streaky.com where you can sign up for my uh, email newsletter it's out once a month at the end of the month and that gives loads of different tips, tricks, discounts, blah, blah, blah. Talking of discounts, if you want me to master for you, then there is a discount code below. Thanks for watching this time, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, bye.